Airbnb hosts and chicken littles all over the internet are going absolutely wild over the idea of market saturation in the short-term rental markets. But if you guys have the right properties out there, you have nothing to worry about. What's up guys? Welcome back to Airbnb ABCs. As this Airbnb bus turns, I continually hear a lot about market saturation and oversaturation. What I hear going on the most is that there are too many properties for the amount of guests that, or there are not enough guests for the amount of properties. And some of those things do have credence, but the biggest things that I'm seeing out of the owners groups that I'm in and out of the different tweets and such that I end up getting about Airbnb and VRBO and short-term rental industry in general is that revenue is down, supply is up, and there is a decrease in demand. I have seen uh, tweets that say that, especially in my market in the Smokies, that revenue for Airbnb hosts is down 40% or more. That the that there is a supply increase in the Airbnb properties available of like 65% or more in the Smoky Mountains. None of this is going to matter if you have the types of properties that I have talked about buying and renting and the way that you do that on this channel. These are going to be your top tier properties in premier vacation markets that are always going to be in demand, really no matter what the economic situation is or what is going on in the world. Now to address some of the specific issues that I just mentioned, such as revenue being down 40%, supply being up 65%, and a decrease in demand, for us, revenue is not down by 40%. And for the most part, everyone that I talk to, I haven't even come across one person actually that has said that their revenue is down 40%. Over the course of me talking to uh, you know hundreds of people in the space, in the Smoky Mountains, pretty much everyone is either flat or within you know five to 10% up or down. And when you're looking at year over year data, that's going to vary from person to person. Maybe last year they had a really, really good year, such as we did. And we are down uh, year over year from 2022 to 2023. I'm going to be making a video on that. So subscribe to the channel. If you're not already, hit the like button so that you can see that, you know, the things that I'm doing are working or, or they're not, or if I'm full of crap, because that's where, you know, the money, the rubber meets the road when you start looking at the dollars and cents coming in and out. So revenue across the board is not down by 40%. Although, you know, one there's like one tweet that has been reposted like a hundred times across all these owners groups that I'm with. And it really just, uh, it it doesn't jive with what actual people are telling me on a day-to-day -day basis. Supply in the Smokies cannot be up 65%. It just simply can't. I have been visiting the Smokies since the 80s and 90s, and I'm very familiar with the area and the speed of which things get done. And when you're talking about construction in the Smokies, things just do not move along. As a matter of fact, I helped a friend of mine set up a cabin a year and a half ago, something like that. And there was a cabin being built next to his that was in the, the uh, process of putting the footers in. The last time I was down there, just a couple months ago, they had the structure up, but it wasn't even dried and didn't have windows or doors or anything like that. And that is, you know, a year and a half into construction for one single structure. The fires that were in 16 and then sometime in the early 2020s, those uh, ended up taking out about 3,000 structures. And even though there has been construction done, there's some places have went up relatively quick. There's still tons of burned out lots, burned out foundations in Chalet Village. And even one of the places where we have, there's at least five lots that I can think of where there are still just burned out foundations and nobody has rebuilt. When you're looking at this data with it going up 65%, a lot of this comes from AirDNA, which tracks Airbnb listings coming to the market. So what you are most likely seeing is people that were either had their properties with management companies who are, have either taken them over and self-managed them and now they're listing them on Airbnb or management companies that are now listing on Airbnb and VRBO or the folks that were only listed on Verbo who now are listing on Airbnb for whatever reason, they weren't listed on both uh, platforms. And so now you're seeing those listings come on. That does not necessarily mean that new properties are coming onto the market. When you're looking at the decrease in demand, there is a lot, in my opinion, that uh, that that there's a lot of truth in that as far as economic related uh, for people just simply being able to afford to go on vacation, especially those that are making around the median income and the median household income. I can definitely see where it would be harder to afford a vacation as well as gas and food and all the other things, rent and mortgage, whatever, that you need to do for your own life, as well as international travel being opened up to a lot more folks uh, with the end of the COVID restrictions with you know international travel. However, I feel like there's probably a lot fewer international travelers that are that are picking that 
over like a Gatlinburg or Panama City vacation because for the most part, I don't think that the, our core consumer for those markets is going to be folks that are thinking about traveling to France or Greece or wherever overseas. I feel like it's mostly blue collar folks looking for a you know two to four day trip to the Smoky Mountains. So you might ask yourself then, Mike, why doesn't market saturation matter? Why aren't you worried about it? And the reason is because I want to take you back to high school and, and I want to take you back to the kind of social structure of that. Um, there was always one person, one boy or girl or whatever that was the most attractive person in school. And it didn't matter if your school had 25 people in a class or 10,000 people in a class. I'm not sure if their school's that big. After that one person, the next 25% down are the extremely attractive folks that are very desirable in very high demand to be associated with, to you know go out with or whatever. What you need to do is make sure that your Airbnb or VRBO short-term rental is in that top 25% of the most attractive properties, attractive cabins, and in the most attractive markets. You need to be in a strong, vacation rental market. A three bedroom ranch in nowhere, Ohio just isn't going to be doing it. People aren't vacationing there. And the the trend for people to use regular homes as overnight accommodations when they didn't want to go to hotels because of COVID, I think that that is kind of being phased out. In my opinion, for one-nighters and you know, you know, transient travel, like if you're going from Cincinnati to Florida and you want to stop in Atlanta and uh, overnight before you make the second leg of your trip or you know, farther down, whatever, I would much rather use a hotel than an Airbnb in those cases. And I think that a lot of folks uh, that did these in just these residential areas that aren't in vacation markets, I think that a lot of those folks are going to struggle for a long time if you know ever recover because it's not a vacation rental market that people are coming to on a regular basis from a large portion of the country. It needs to be in the top 25% market. It needs to be in the top 25% of its class, not necessarily in the entire area. In the Smoky Mountains, you have everything from very small studio cabins to you know 12 bedroom. I think there's a 24 bedroom cabin. You don't need to be the 24 bedroom cabin. You need to be the best in the 24 bedroom cabin class or if you're like me and you own two and three bedroom cabins you need to be in the, the best in the two to three bedroom class because that's going to attract different people than your bigger cabins again you know, there's no need to compete with the four and five bedrooms if you have a two bedroom cabin those are going to be for you know you have families maybe a couple of families maybe just a, a couple on vacation in the smoky mountains market you want to have a log cabin that has the appropriate amenities for the area that is modern, that's uncluttered, that's well put together, functions well, preferably has views, and just is an attractive cabin overall. Those things are going to bump you to the top. Throw in a pool table, an air hockey table, a video game, a stand-up arcade game, a fire pit, a fireplace, outdoor lighting, just something to set you apart from just the crappy old, outdated, cluttered, drywall, missing key amenities, poorly managed, terrible cabins. And those cabins are more popular, or I should say, more of them than you might think. A lot of the listings in the cabins that I look at from folks that want me to look at them or from other, you know, just looking around the area when I'm comparing properties, com trying to get my pricing locked down, I notice that a lot of cabins are just not great. And so it's actually pretty easy to stand out. If you're in a beach market, you can do the same things. You want the light and airy, ca uh, light and airy beach houses. You want to preferably have a view of the beach. You want it to be within at least walking distance of the beach everything updated and find something to make your place stand out. Maybe it is putting in a hot tub so that you get bookings on the shoulder months that you wouldn't typically get bookings in, like maybe your Marches or your Octobers or Novembers, something like that. In addition to your property needing to be top notch, your listing needs to be top notch. You can wreck your Airbnb career by buying the best possible cabin, beach house, lake house, whatever, and then just torpedoing it with an absolutely terrible listing. You need professional, 
photographs from a professional photographer that knows how to photograph a uh, short-term rental to try to showcase the space in the best possible way to try to maximize the view of that place. That doesn't necessarily mean that everyone that claims to be a professional with a camera who photographs for the local realtors is going to be able to do the, the job that you want them to do to present your place in the best possible light. Look up in your local Facebook groups who is the uh, top short-term rental photographer use them or use someone else that's in again that top 25 percent of those people so that you get the best photographs possible because these are the, the things that are going to stop people from scrolling and click on your link and you know potentially book your place your listing needs to be easy to read it needs to have a great title and it needs to have a cover picture that again stops people from scrolling it needs to be positive and showcase the space in the best possible way your management needs to be top notch on these places you again you can have a great property a great great listing. And if your management is awful, then it's just going to torpedo the whole thing. This is going to entail your pricing, your minimum stage, your communication, your upkeep, and your crisis management. All of these things are going to be key to getting your place booked, having the right prices on the right times of the week. You can price weekends typically higher than you can price weekdays. Having the right minimum stays. If you have minimum stays that are too long, you're going to not get bookings. If you have minimum stays that are too short, you may end up with orphan days. You really need to nail that down for your particular particular market and your particular property. Communication with guests is key. I treat these uh, these messages as if they're text messages, and I try to get back to people as soon as possible, preferably within one or two minutes. That is going to go great. It's going to be reflected in your reviews, and you're going to get more bookings. Upkeep is going to be making sure that everything works, the place is clean, you're keeping the track of your cleaners and just keeping your place at top notch. And then when something does go wrong, because it will, there will be some sort of problem, hot tub problem, air conditioning problem, an electrical problem, plumbing, how you deal with that is going to reflect in your reviews and if you just let people cancel if they want to go somewhere else uh, maybe a thing to do so it's the thing that i do and so your crisis management on uh, all this management is going to uh to keep you booked it's going to keep everything rolling and it's not going to matter how many re rental properties there are because you are going to be in the top 25 percent most desirable that everyone wants to be with if you guys can do these things i don't see a way that you are going to lose as long as you purchase the property with the numbers uh with numbers that make sense uh, at the time that you bought it if you got something out of this Hit that thumbs up button for me. If you haven't yet subscribed to the channel, subscribe down below so you don't miss anything that I put out, especially the uh, revenue numbers that we have put up for June year over year of 2023 versus 2022. I appreciate you guys watching today and I'll see you in the next one.